You know that feeling you get right before a trip that you're about to do something that's gonna be absolutely wild? That's the, that's the feeling I have right now. That's the anxiety I have right now this trip. But if everything works out, we're safe, we complete the trip, this is gonna be epic. You know, just so we're all on the same page here, I'm like legitimately lost. It's just, it's just terrible. We're not doing the trip. I've decided that uh, it's, it's just not gonna happen. Massive moose standing right in front of me that just ran off on our first issue here. This is not what I wanted to do at like nine o'clock at night. Came across, came across our first black bear. Hey! No joke, there's a pickup truck coming. Am I in trouble? You can see the size of this thing. Compared to my bike. It's crazy. Crazy that they do this. It's a black bear sitting on the sitting on the road. It's like it's literally chicken heads, man. Or rooster heads. Like someone's cut a bunch of heads off the rooster. There's a storm brewing, guys. Everybody inside. This is Algonquin Provincial Park and the surrounding area. In 2004, a route was dreamed up to connect the four Algonquin Outfitters stores throughout the park. Huntsville, Brent, Opiongo, and Oxtong. That summer, the meanest link was officially invented and is a canoe route created to honor the memory of Bill Swift Sr one of the founders of Algonquin Outfitters. It linked the lakes, rivers, and portages between the four Algonquin Outfitters stores and has traditionally been done by canoe, until now. Self-propelled by bike for nearly nine days and 400 kilometers, I would overlay and stitch together a land route consisting of crown land, ATV trails, logging roads, abandoned railways, rural back roads, and highways to achieve the same general path throughout and around Algonquin, connecting the original stores together into one bikepacking expedition. Well, at least that was my plan. And we all know how well plans go, right? It's not possible. It's actually not possible. Like, I don't know if you can see. We're going back, we're taking a different route. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and say that we're pot committed. Meaning, even if it takes me 10 days to get to Cedar Lake or Brent, I'm doing it, man. I'm not turning back now. We're way too deep. I've put in way too much work and like, look how bad this is. This has to open up eventually. You know that feeling you get right before a trip that you're about to do something that's gonna be absolutely wild? That's the, that's the feeling I have right now. That's the anxiety I have right now this trip. A lot of challenges, a lot of challenges. But if everything works out, we're safe, we complete the trip, this is gonna be epic. Stop number one, the Huntsville Algonquin Outfitters. We gotta get out of town, there's a lot of traffic here. Making a left on Highway 8 right up here. 
get off this highway. Doing a quick map verification that we're on the right track. I believe that we are though. I believe we are. Now, I haven't gone into a lot of details because I haven't left the main highway. <clears throat> well, I've left Highway 60, but I haven't left Highway 8 and there's still a lot of cars. But it takes a lot of maps to put this route together. You guys know me, I'm not really a GPS fan. I like to actually navigate. So I've got a back roads map. I've got Jeff's map. I've got ATV trail maps. I got lots. So I'm just verifying that one matches the other. Gotta love the downhills. Gotta love the downhills. So here we are at the Big East River. I'm sitting in the middle of the bridge. It's time to talk about a couple things that we're doing on this trip. <clears throat> Huntsville uh, was very busy and along Highway 60 was very busy and along Highway 8 was very busy. So I basically just kind of gave her some sauce and got here as fast as I could. This is the Big East River. Now I am planning to camp here tonight but it's four o'clock, so I might continue. The reason why I selected this campsite is when I was taking a look at um, some of the routes that were possible around uh, Algonquin to make it the meanest link, I noticed that you could potentially take Highway 11 all the way up to the Tim Lake access point, because that's what we're trying to do. The first section on the western part of Algonquin along the Crown lands is basically Huntsville, to uh, Tim River access. And you can take the highway, but that's that's cheating and that's not allowed. So I'm making it mandatory, if you're gonna bike pack the meanest link, um, to cross this bridge on the Big East River. That way it kind of forces you to hit the logging roads or the, uh, the ATV and snowmobile trails off of Highway 8. And then it forces you to kind of hug the boundary of the west side of Algonquin. A little bit more adventure and certainly um, you know, not as busy. I anticipate almost seeing no cars pass here, probably just ATVs. Secondly, <clears throat> you're wondering about the maps that I'm using. So for the west side, the Crown Land section of this trip, you are going to want to get the back roads map book for Kearney. Um, and that is very good. It kind of outlines everything. It's better than Jeff's maps. Jeff's maps has some of the roads, but the back road uh, map book has actually the names of the roads. And that's a huge help because Jeff's map doesn't have that. Uh, I kind of use Jeff's map first to kind of pick a route and then I grab the Kearney back roads map book and that has from Huntsville all the way to Tim River access. And then I went on um, Google Earth actually and plotted my route along there to see how far it was and you know, where water sources were and stuff like that. So those are the rules for the first section and in uh, subsequent episodes I'll go over the rules for the second section. So let's go to the, see what the campsite would look like and then probably sun goes down at 8 o'clock so I got I wouldn't mind biking for two more hours. Two more hours. Oof. Very steep here. So we just started going seems that the portage at the uh, the marked portage has a rope across it 
Um, I don't know what that means, like, because they don't want cars driving down it or because, like, it's closed or something. So I'm going to give it a go and see what happens. But you know what? The first sign of um, trouble in any way, I'll just back out and they've got a second route using the ATV trail. Here's the, this is it. So there's actually um, like a cabin right there. So I don't think that that's the portage. I think that's somebody's private property and I'm not interested in, in doing that. So there's like, you know, probably an extra kilometer or so just to go the long way around. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do that. You'll see in the map, I'll adjust it so that the map um, absolutely is specific to the route that I took. Okay, so we're actually having some additional challenges here. That's a dead end and it looks like, like you're not allowed down that road. I think it's a private road. There's a dog barking and stuff. So I'm gonna try this ATV trail, see how that goes. I also have an ATV trail map, which might be helpful. So let's see. You know, just so we're all on the same page here, I'm like legitimately lost. Now I'm not too worried, um, cause it's day one, I got a lot of food. I can always find my way back. That's the Big East River right there. I can see it flowing. And that's sort of, I think, where the rapids are. So the road says no trespassing again. There's this trail over here. And I'm thinking I can maybe just take it up to the next, the next road. Oh man, I don't know about this. I really don't know. I believe this is the unmaintained campsite, which is good. It means there should be like an off-road trek to the next road up here. Which should be very good for me. Currently five o'clock. Oh, is it opening right there? We found the creek. It looks to be right here says there's a road. This road was private. I don't know what it is now. I gotta see if there's even a road. I'm gonna cross the creek. It looks like it's actually on the other side. Anyway, this is uh, turning out to be a, a day here, man. This is the situation right now. I didn't think it was gonna be like so soon of intensity, but let's see what happens. I know you guys only saw like a small clip, but dude, that was work. Like that's serious bushwhacking with the bike and then like the craziest ATV trail. I could barely even ride it. Anyway, I had to check the GPS guys. Like <clears throat> it just didn't make sense. It looks like that if I take this road here down, it'll head up after. But you know, there's so much private property around here. I just, and like no trespassing zones. I don't understand. I don't understand. I thought this was all crown land. So let's just go. Oh, good, good, good. For real, come on. Whoa. Oh, and it reeks. It just reeks. <sighs> Woo! Beggars can't be choosers. Oh, yeah. I'll take it. 
I'll take it, buddy. So just as an update, I did run out of water a while ago, so I was dying a little bit. Just filled up just this one bottle. Getting sore, it's just after six. I gotta find my way out of these ATV rail trails. Uh, like I don't wanna, I wanna try and find the main road. So I've got two more hours of sunlight, maximum, maximum. Like, you know, I really should be at my campsite now. But I'm gonna push on. I have a pretty good feeling that I'm on the right track. I got the GPS going, I do but it's so difficult to follow these trails. And I'm just working, man. So we keep pushing on soldier style. It's awesome though. It's pretty, pretty challenging, pretty fun. Massive moose standing right in front of me that just ran off, scared the hell out of me. Big guy too. I guess he took off into the bush. It's probably a good thing. People don't realize everyone's always nervous about bears, which sure are a legitimate concern. A moose, if cornered, they'll kill you, man. They are huge, size of horses, right? Bigger. So, oh man, let's go. I can hear something. Okay, guys. This is the situation. I am defeated. <clears throat> I cannot get out of this maze. The only thing I can think of is to go all the way back to the Big East River where that was that super well-groomed ATV trail. <clears throat> and I'm gonna take it eastbound. And I think it's, I'm just gonna follow that until it takes me somewhere, honestly. Because there's like, I'm just like, I'm in the middle of nowhere here and I even have the GPS going. You can't get out of here. It, everywhere is a dead end. Everywhere actually ends in one of these like little hunting shelters. So I'm going to go back to the main ATV trail and I'm just going to follow it. And plus it's by the river. It is 6.30. I got an hour or so before I need to find camp. Recognize this. That's where I came from. I originally went down there and then... I changed my mind. I looked at the map and it looked like this was a better way to go. There's, there's nothing up there. I can't. If I go back there, that's going back towards Huntsville. The only thing I can do is head up here and just see. See where it takes me. It's not too far from the old uh, railway that goes through Algonquin. But I mean, it would be five kilometers of bushwhacking with the bike from here. Let's see if this takes us a little bit closer and then heads up. It's the... You know, I'm really nervous right now because I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do the rest of the trip. Like, how am I going to actually get there if I can't find my way through these logging roads or these uh, ATV trails? Look at this. This is nice. Guys, you're not going to believe this. You're actually not going to believe this. That took me in a huge loop. Fuck. The only place left to go is to try this one. And I have... Honestly, I have no idea where these go. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay, I gotta think. I gotta think. So I'm not joking you. This is freaky. Look. I'm literally back. I'm back at the cottage. How the hell do I get, like, how do I get out of this place? The only thing I can think of is I could go all the way back to where I came from. It's the only thing I can think of. You know what? Fuck it. It's the only way to get out of here. This is crazy. I'm actually, like, it's, it's getting dark in 30 minutes. I'm screwed. I'm going to go all the way back, all the way back, and follow it back out. Who remembers this spot? Three times a charm, right? Okay. This day is turning out to be uh, certainly a crazy adventure. Let's hope something works out for me here. Okay. All clear. We're making our way along the ATV trail. 
That's the only update I got. This is the super sketchy bridge. Like super sketchy. Whoa! Well, I think we found our campsite for the night. It's actually, I mean, there's an ATV trail around it, but it's kind of not bad. And it's got water, no fire tonight. It's currently 8.15, 8.15, let's see the view. Ooh, a little muddy, you know what? Like I said before, beggars can't be choosers. Okay guys, I know you can barely see me. It's almost time to break the headlamp out. I now understand what happened. Here's the do not enter sign. I guess that guy down there owns this road. I have no idea. This is the ATV trail. It should be open. I don't know why it's not. So we can take this right back out to the bridge. That's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna take me 10 minutes. I'll put my headlamp on though. Still going, baby. Still going. Oh, a little bit of light still coming through. What's up here? This is where we're camping. What a day. It's 8.30 and we literally were here at like 3.30 today. We spent five hours trying to get through those logging roads and it's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna bore you guys, I'm gonna set up because I wanna eat some food, I wanna relax a little bit for sure. Um, and then we're gonna go over what we're gonna do. No campfire tonight, not much talking. I think there's a, I think there's two moose right over there but it's tough for me to see, I gotta get my headlamp out. Oh, it's so hard to see but tent is set up. I'll show you tomorrow. Tent pole that I built is obviously too high or I've gotta do something. Second thing I wanted to show you this is what's for dinner. Oh my god, you have no idea how good this is. No idea. Okay guys, I'm all set up in the tent. It's gonna be an early night for sure because I'm beat. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna spend some time looking at the maps. Obviously, we can't go through the Crown Land uh, ATV trails like I had planned. Um, I do not know exactly what we're gonna do. I'd prefer not to ride up the highway. I think that would be kind of boring, but if we gotta do it, we gotta do it. So what we'll do is we'll get settled, we'll go to bed, I'll put a plan together, and I'll let you know in the morning. The hell's that noise? Jeez, did you guys hear that? I don't know what that was, but it woke me the hell up. It's 1.45 in the morning. I don't want that thing to come back. It's Friday morning, day number two. Hope you guys are well. After I went to bed, actually I had a terrible sleep. There was like, I don't know, some kind of crazy bird thing, I don't know, over there. If you know what that was, that noise, let me know in the comments. Okay. Do you guys remember in uh, the first day, I sat on the bridge and I gave like this little spiel, this, uh, um, this speech about not taking the highway up to Tim River and like, you know, going through the logging roads and the ATV trails. I want you to forget I ever said that right now for this trip. Moving forward, if somebody knows a route through there that can get me up there, I don't know, <clears throat> show me on a piece of paper and email it to me because I cannot find one. And also, I had also recommended to you guys to get the back, uh, back roads map of Kearney. I also cannot recommend it. I believe the issue is that that map shows roads, which is correct, 
but it doesn't show that they're private. And there's a lot of private roads through here, or at least there's a lot of gates with a lot of privacy, um, the do not trespass and stuff. So that map makes it seem like there's a ton of roads over there that you can use, but I don't think that's actually the case. So we are gonna head back down to Highway 8, across Highway 60 and up 11 to Kearney and down Forestry Tower Road. It is going to be about an 80 kilometer day. Um, a lot of this stuff you've seen. So um, I'm not gonna film on the way back because I mean, there's literally nothing to see unless something super exciting happens. And we'll make like a little montage all the way up, but it's gonna be uh, a grind of a day in order to make up for the lost time. So it is what it is. Let's pack up. It's actually a little bit cold. It's a little bit cold outside. Let's pack up and uh, and get going. I'm pretty excited just to just to push past this crown land section and get onto the logging roads. Tent organization is key. It's time. It's time to open sesame. Get some shoes on. See how this goes. A little bit damp. Should be very, very warm today. So I'm not overly concerned about it being chilly in the morning. Yesterday, with the Humidex, it was 39 Celsius, which is why I drank, you know, 18 liters of water. Um, and today is supposed to be similar. It is supposed to rain tomorrow. So, you know how much I love rain. I do love it. Oh, I've got some sore legs, guys. Big time. Big time sore. You guys want to see what I did with my food last night? The famous bridge hang. Love it. Now we take all the dense chocolate bars and small stuff and we put them in the frame bag. That leaves all the lighter weight food to go in the seat post pack. My homemade ultralight titanium tent stakes. The plastic is showing a little bit of wear. And my homemade carbon fiber tent poles for when I'm bike packing and I don't have hiking sticks. Oh. Oh. Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, time check 8 a.m. on the nose. Eight forty-five, made it to Highway Eight. A lot of that was actually downhill. It's nine thirty-eight. We're at the big stop sign. Highway sixty. We're making good time. I need approximately eight hours to get to Tim River Access from here. So, you know, stop for some lunch. We should be there by six, and my body will be cooked by then. Plug it away. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kearney. I can't wait until one of you guys has to ride Highway 11 because it's insane, okay? Oh, 
On the way here, we passed two logging trucks. And, um, you know, to say that it was a little intense would be an understatement. And the roads are, they're narrow, man. And they're busy. And I'm really reconsidering this trip. I'm really thinking that it might not be a good idea. Right now, if I bail on this trip, I head back to Kearney, I can do the Park to Park Trail. The Park to Park Trail goes from Algonquin to um, um, Kill Bear. I think it's like 250 kilometers long. I mean, I'm already packed for it. It would just be changing my plans and I just don't think that I can do this trip. I don't believe I'm gonna be able to get away with it. I passed two logging trucks on the way here. And man, it's intense. The roads are thin and it's intense. And that's why I think I should make an executive decision and do the park to park trail right now. Just abandon this. This video will still stay up. If anybody wants to do the meanest link, go right ahead. There's just navigational issues are too intense. I haven't done enough research. So somebody can pick up where I left off or maybe we change the route a little bit. Okay, let me think. Let me think a little bit about what to do. Honestly, I'm so confused as to what to do. But anyway, this is how I'm gonna end this video. I'm going to stop talking about it now. We're not doing the trip. I've decided that uh, it's it's just not gonna happen. So I'm gonna to, I'm gonna like just bail on this trip and I'm gonna do the park to park. I'm gonna head back to Huntsville. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get a ride. And I don't know how I'm gonna to talk to the ranger or something like that. I'll pay like a couple hundred bucks. Someone will drive me down there in their pickup truck. Maybe he will. And um, what I'll do is I'm gonna revisit the loop. I'm gonna see if I can do it without using these specific logging roads here. These ones here seem to be a little bit uh, more challenging than the ones I've used down by Radiant and stuff like that. Those ones are actually really nice. So as an update, and I don't know how much I'm gonna actually show you of the previous uh, video, but I was actually just bailing on the trip. And I still might, I still might. There's some significant challenges, and one of them is the distance. You guys are aware of how much I bike today. <laughs> I've had a rest. Um, but I met some people that are driving down the old logging road, and I went and I checked it out. It looks actually pretty cool. And so it's Friday night, it's five o'clock, it gets dark around nine. I thought, you know what, maybe I just take it easy and see if I can get in there a little bit and just scope it out. Just scope it out to see what it's like. And if it ends up being a little bit too intense, then, uh, then I'll bail, I'll come back. But until then, I think we check it out. So this is the park limit. I think it's okay. I think it's okay to ride your bike. That's what the guy told me last time. I don't know why it's gated off. I think the reason why it's gated off is because it's actually active logging. They just want cars going up here. Bikes and walking shouldn't be a big deal. Plus it's Friday at 5.30. They're probably done for the day, I would guess. another emergency landing area I guess to get people out or something like that um, six o'clock we're at kilometer 15 I'm not really sure where we're gonna go tonight we're just gonna go until we're past the active logging section which is the first 20 kilometers of the road and um, then we'll judge from there how much further we want to go it's so creepy here like I'm trying to hear look, look listen for trucks and stuff did I tell you that uh, today when I was on my way up, two logging trucks passed me? It's crazy, man. You, you can't, you actually, you don't understand what it's like. The dust and rocks, you have to dive into the uh, forest. So, you know, whenever I see people asking, like, can I ride these roads? You cannot when the logging road is there or when the logging um, truck is there. 
seems to be a little less traveled this section. Hopefully we're in the right on the right way. Beauty. We're taking a time out. Middle of the road, 6:30. Rain's holding off. Um, you know it's running. I don't mind pushing on. The problem is, is that I have to be careful not to hurt myself. I never told you guys this, but yesterday was a huge day. Um, pushing the bike through those the crown land there. And at one point, my thighs, um, this is your hamstring, this is your quads. My quads were like cramped, you know, these are your quads. I don't know, I gotta look that up. Anyway, they were cramping, like pretty badly, to the point where I was getting a little bit nervous. So today we've done a huge mileage day, and I still feel good, but you know, what I don't want is in like a day or two, for my knee to go funky, and then the next thing you know, I gotta cancel the trip. So. If I see somewhere cool to camp, I'm going to camp. A little bit of rain coming down, a little bit of rain. Nothing bad, but I was anticipating it to rain tomorrow, not tonight. It's okay. I actually bought a new jacket. It's the Z-Pax. Um, I think it's called the Virtus. I don't know. I can't remember. I'm even getting that mixed up with a different company. Anyway. Size large, fits pretty good for me. Um, it looks tight on the waist. That's because I got my fanny pack on. Okay, let's get going. Put in the bridge. So the plan is stop somewhere around here. Came across our first black bear. Hey! Go and get out of here. Go on! I don't know if you can hear them crashing through the woods. They cut a berm into it. Same type of thing that they did on the rail trail. I guess to stop people from driving on it. For me, it doesn't really matter. And then the right looks good. We've got to check. Uh, actually, it looks like right is the way. Getting that time. Time to find a campsite. Looks like we won't make it to Ramona. Not even close. That's fine. Um, but there's a stream coming up here. Maybe it'll be somewhere there. Guess this is when it starts to get real. I mean, I can get over to my bike, but that's a serious deterrent. There'll be no cars coming up on this way. Look what they did to us. Okay. It's gonna be tough. That was a little bit of work, but we did it. We did it. They're not making this easy. So I can go down there and up the side. Okay, campsite for the night. I think it's just going to be right here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the stakes in. But yeah, that's it. Let's go. Well, those are the sounds of being deep in the park. We're basically actually in the center of the park, if you look at where we are. Other thing I want to talk about was this chair. This is the uh, Helinox. No, 
Uh, yeah, Helinox Zero Chair. Oh my God. At the end of the day, it is fantastic. And when you're biking, it doesn't really matter how much, well, you know, you can bring a little bit more weight without any issue. Got the bike just over there now. now let me see if I can get you. A... There it is. There we go. There's the, okay, there we are. It's the tent. Got my pepperoni sticks. Gonna put my food down there somewhere. I'm just gonna have, I'm not gonna eat dinner tonight. I just did so many miles on the bike. Just gonna eat some pepperonis and some cheese. Uh, drink a little bit. Then I'm gonna look at the map and I'll tell you guys how I feel about uh, like the pace that we're going and, and if we can make it out of here. Cause these first two days have been a struggle for sure. I thought this was gonna be kind of like an easier trip. So let's see. Oh, something you gotta do on the reg. Check your body out. Make sure that you know there's no blisters or toenails coming off. All that kind of stuff. Feet feel good. They look good, except for the pre-existing conditions of my big toes, which I continuously show you guys. All right. So I looked at some of the maps, and to be honest, if everything works out tomorrow we should be able to make it to Brent, <clears throat> which will put me a full day ahead of schedule, which is awesome because um, the I don't, I don't want to ride the logging roads on the, during the week. <clears throat> I'll, I'll ride them during the week in the evening like I did today, but not during the day. So if I can get to Cedar or Brent tomorrow, then that means Sunday I can make it most of the way to uh, Opiongo, which means like, you know, and then the rest of the trip is on uh, Highway 60 and through some back roads and stuff, which would put me in a really high chance for success. Because right now, I'm still nervous that I can't do it. Like I'm nervous that something's gonna come up or, you know, tomorrow the road will be washed out or won't be able to cross a bridge or something. So, um, which would really suck because I'm in the middle of the park. And um, as long as it doesn't rain, I will be a happy camper. So fingers crossed, and I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. 7.45 on day number three. As you know, I went to bed at 9.30, so I was tired. Okay, it did rain. It rained for a little bit, and I remember seeing on the forecast that it was going to rain through the night, <clears throat> stop in the morning, and start again at 11 a.m., We've got another big day today. We want to do some like hard pushing. So let's get up and get rolling so we can make distance before the rain comes. That's the plan. Well, I wouldn't say that it's cold this morning, but uh, it's a little bit damp <clears throat> and I'm not on the bike yet sweating. So got to take that into account. Uh, a lot of people ask me how long it takes to pack up in the morning. And that really just depends. The number one factor that I find, which will make a big difference how motivated I am to get rolling. If I really want to get rolling and I'm just on like a solo backpacking trip where I've got all my ultralight stuff, you know, I'm up and out in 15 minutes. No problem. I don't have coffee in the morning. I don't do any of that. I just get a granola bar, stuff it in my mouth and get hiking. Um, when I'm bike packing, <clears throat> a little bit more to it because you have to unload everything out of all the bags. And actually one thing in particular that's difficult for me is that um, on my frame bag. That's where I have all my granola bars and everything and I have to unload them manually. So not that it takes like 10 minutes, but it's just something to kind of think about. So yeah, when I'm bike packing, probably 45 minutes, half an hour to get, get out. If I'm canoeing with the wife, like on our trip, we're going to be going to Nelly Lake. It'll be, uh, it'll be two hours to set up just because we'll have or to, to clean up because we'll have coffee. We'll relax it a little bit. That's where I make all my gourmet meals. It's a side of me. You guys don't see a lot of, but, uh, for now, let's just get the heck out of here and get rolling. I'm very excited for today.
Well, we left at 8.45, so it was a solid hour to pack up and get out, and I wasn't rushing, really. Uh, we've only been biking for like five minutes, and we've come to this. Option number one, or option number two. I believe it's option number one, but um, this is gonna be GPS work because the, the, the deeper I get into the park, the more I realize that if I had like a mechanical failure of the bike or, you know, injured or something like that, sure, I can do hit my Garmin, but I'd like to be able to get out on my own and I don't wanna just be like in the middle of nowhere. So we'll check the GPS. I think that's the way to Ramona. Oh, it's a big poop over here too. Someone's been pooping up the storm over here. If someone lives here. The road is definitely a lot more overgrown now. Uh, kind of concerned about how much worse it gets, to be honest. But if you can read that, it says Memorial Drive. I have no idea what's down there. There's another logging road right there. I might just go take a quick look to see like what that means. But we are like right in the center of the park. I'm not sure why there's a street sign. Look at the map. Hmm. Nemo. Somebody has been down this road before. Great set of tent stakes. Whoops. What else is in there? That's it. All right, I'll take this out. But, whoo, that means someone actually battled their way through this. But uh, they didn't document it, so it didn't happen, I guess. Looks like it's new too. Like this doesn't look like it's old. Doing a little push bike. Doing a little push bike. Ripping down that hill for probably like a full kilometer. So fast actually, I didn't want to let go of the handlebars and take the GoPro out. Um, and now we've come to another berm here, big huge berm and a big log. And it looks like another one down there. So I'm guessing that this middle section, the part that was really overgrown, you remember the berms that we saw yesterday that we climbed over? I'm guessing like this section has been closed for years and up here there's a junction. I'm hoping that it gets a little bit nicer. Um, like I, I, I could be completely lying, I have no idea, but that's just my guess. That they didn't want people traversing the park, so they put berms like, you know, 10 kilometers apart. So you could only go on each side of the, the park, you know, the west side of the east side. Once again, at a junction, option number one, option number two, I believe it is again, option number one. But clearly, my anticipation of having a well-groomed logging road, as soon as we came off that, uh, does not happen. You know what we do? We push on. We push on.
we have to go back. Even with a GPS and a map, I have found out that we are aligned, we're right here on this side road. We need to go back and head up here. I don't know how I missed that, to be honest. Like, I'm so upset right now. It'll probably take me, it's 10, 15, it'll take me half an hour or so to get back. And then we gotta figure out what the, how that even happened. I've been having a lot of root finding issues lately. Okay, we gotta go back. Like clockwork, 11 a.m., rain. Love it, love it! That's where I came from, that's where I went, and this is the correct way. Just looked like a game trail, to be honest. I gotta remember to keep uh, my eyes and wits about me a little bit more, because that burned like an hour, and it's not just an hour of time, it's an hour of energy. Um, I gotta make big miles these days, so, you know, shame on me for doing that. Lesson learned. Got the full outfit on. The pine trees are actually brushing up against my legs and they're hurting me, so I'm gonna wear these rain pants. I know that it might ruin them, but I'd rather ruin the pants than my skin. I thought I busted my GoPro. Okay guys, we're gonna have some work to do today. Um, I think you've seen what this looks like. Not a big deal, but there's certainly some uh, speed issues that are going on. It actually got really bad there for a bit. So it actually looks like I might go to ride this. Back there was a disaster. Let's see. A little bit of bush, a little bit of bush. Ah, fuck. I keep hitting my leg with my pedal and pushing it. It's cutting my leg. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and say that we're pot committed. Meaning, even if it takes me 10 days to get to Cedar Lake or Brent, I'm doing it, man. I'm not turning back now. We're way too deep. I've put in way too much work and like, look how bad this is. This has to open up eventually. And when it does, I'll be there, ready to, oh, don't swear, ready to ride my heart out. Oh, come on, buddy. Yeah, I'm just hoping that it opens up like in the next few hours sort of thing. So there's actually another logging road turnoff right there. It's left, it's totally lined up with what I'm supposed to do on my, um, my trip. Or what I'm supposed to do on the map, but it's like, not 100%, doesn't 100% make sense to me. So I'm gonna go forward to the right uh, for five minutes and see what happens. It looks like we're like a little bit too early to make the left, that's all. That's the route, that's the route. As thick as it gets, guys. So at this point, it's probably all maintained by animals, the game trails. You can see the trails are pretty low. So you want to make a lot of noise when you're in these parts of the bush because what happens is, you know, they're going through the woods. The branches are making a bunch of noise by their ears. We're going through the woods, we're not paying attention, and they are very low, they're low to the ground, lower to the ground than us. And you have an encounter, and that's what you don't want. So, you know, every once in a while, I'll just give a little holler out. Mostly bears and moose that you want to be careful of. Woo! You know, a little whatever it is. I don't want to have to kill a bear with my bare hands. No pun intended. We're about 10K from Ramona Lake. And Ramona Lake is where I was supposed to stay tonight. Um, now, based on the length of time this is taking me, I may actually stay at Ramona Lake tonight. If for some reason I can somehow uh, get moving a little bit faster, then we can make our way past that. But uh, it, time will tell. Let's just plug away, 
this is one of those days where you just you just put your time in. You just go, you go, you go, and you just see where you get to. Um, if I get to Ramona, great. If I don't, there's a bunch of other lakes I can camp at. But uh, I would like to get at least to Ramona. What's the time? Time check. 12.18. So left at what? 8.45, 9.45, 10.45, 11.45. Three and a half hours. Have not made good time. So that's at least got a trail. This here. It did, you know, whenever... It's kind of funny. It's like... At least, at, a, at the very least, there's a trail. You know what I mean? And I was kind of like, oh, this sucks. It would be great if I could ride. Now, I mean, there really is nothing. So we got to go this way. I'm going to see maybe if it's just a short section that's overgrown and then maybe we could pick back up. But uh, yeah, and there's, there's definitely no trail here. This is about it. Gnarly as it gets, I would say. Oh, it's like a little bit of a trail here. Oh, this is going to be slow going, guys. Like, really slow going. Okay, I gotta put the GoPro away. This is gonna be uh, this is gonna be a problem, I think. I'm gonna see if maybe I can just take like path over there. This is not a possibility right now. That's a good sign. Get it? Good sign? There's two reasons. It's not a good sign. It's actually a bad sign, but it's a good sign for me because that means that the road was actually here. Like I'm really, really bushwhacking here, you know? So I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, I don't end up in the middle of nowhere. Honestly, I got 10 days worth of food, but I still want to be able to get out of here alive. I wouldn't SOS it, but it would sure suck if like I just got turned around. My guess is that's the bridge, and I can hear water over there, which means they've removed the bridge, and there is just a big bushwhack ahead of us here. All right, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got.
Look at my bike. I thought I could hear some water. I haven't checked the GPS in a while either. Probably should. So, clearly logging road is gone. Looks like I can probably just get through right there. But this is it. So, we've now finished um, like the decommissioned portion. Not that that looks any better, but I think, oh dear Lord, dear Lord, if you can hear me, please get easier. Like, please get easier for me. It is two o'clock in the afternoon. I've been bushwhacking since like 10. And it's not like bushwhacking, you know, like, hey, gotta move a couple things. It's work, man. I haven't filmed half the stuff I'd do because it would just take too long. But uh, we will, as always, continue. And now, hopefully, it'll get nicer. It's just, it's just terrible. It's actually just terrible. Three thirty. We've been going hard all day. It's not letting up. Like we're still here. We're still in this doing do this duty. It's actually like getting worse. So the issue is is like does the road ever start again? Because if it doesn't, you know, I got to come up with a different plan. Ramona is probably about six kilometers from here. Right now I'm doing about a kilometer an hour. I'll get there at nine o'clock or something like that. But it... Oh. Hey! But uh, Brent is 46 kilometers from Ramona. So if there's no logging road, like I just can't do it. I actually, uh, I won't be able to do the trip. So, so I don't know, like I'm just going to, I'm going to get to Ramona and then fucking figure out what to do. We have either a water crossing or something like that coming up. But whatever it is, it'd be great if it meant this thing would open up. Oh my. Well, I said it was going to be one hell of an adventure. And it really is. And it's early. We've got time. Like, we can, we can bushwhack all the way there. It is... It's 4.30, we have four more hours of sunlight. I know my glasses are a little bit fogged up. So worst case scenario is an hour, uh, a kilometer, and we'll get there before, before midnight or before dark. But wouldn't it be great if it opened up? I'm a broken man. There's few things in life that can break me. And this fucking place is one of them. Oh, okay, so somehow I'm in some large opening. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm just going to sit down for five minutes, figure out where we are. Holy moly. I don't believe I'll be able to ride long. But anything's better than pushing the bike. So we'll ride until I guess you can't go anymore. It's 30 seconds. 30 seconds of riding. It's 5.30. Three kilometers from Ramona. I am defeated, guys.
Uh, I hope I'm not coming across like I'm whining too much. It's fun, but oh my God, this is true type three fun. Fun that is not fun. And I would never do this again. Actually, I don't recommend anybody doing this route. That'll kill you. That'll kill. That'll make Santa Claus a, a murderer. That thing right there. That's a clog. That is a clog. Oh my God. Oh. I don't want to get my hopes up, but for the last five minutes I've been riding my bike. It's not good, but it's not bad. It's this here. I can handle this. A lot of blowdowns, so I got to stop, but that's okay. See this? Knee high? I t I'll take it. I'll take it. <sighs> Update number 4,750. Now that the thing's a little bit clear, you know what I might do? I might just go and check to see if it's continued clear uh, as we go past. But look at the portage, man. Like, look at that portage. And I have a campsite booked and what, oh, there's a big fly here. What I'm thinking is instead of pushing until for like another hour and a half and then camping somewhere shit, let's head down the portage. Let's go to an actual campsite, like a really nice one, or at least I hope so. Cause this is, this is um, Remora. Remora, oh, 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 no. Ramona, this is Ramona Lake. We are like smack dab in the center of Algonquin. This site was available like indefinitely. I guess no one makes it out here. So there's two right beside each other. Let's have an early night. Maybe we can have a fire, sit by the chair, let the body heal. And tomorrow we'll, uh, we'll head to Cedar. Remember, it's all about fun. It's all about fun. Even though we want to finish, it is also all about fun. And I'm, I'm tired, man. I just spent unbelievable amount of time. 10 hours, something like that, eight hours, which way. I'm happy here. It's gonna get set up, not gonna waste any time. This, this is the other site. Clearly mine is the winner. We got a big log out there, which is cool. You can walk between the sites from the portage actually. That's why it's beneficial if you got a bike like mine. So yeah, closest, closest site to the portage is the better one. Today is the day where I go over some of my gear with you guys. Oh, first I'd like to tell you that I'm sore. So. Tent-wise, I have the uh, Z-Pax Solplex. I don't believe, oh my God. I don't believe that they make it anymore. Um, I think it's called the Altiplex now or the Hexamid, I don't even know. Mine was called the Solplex when I bought it. I bought it a long time ago. It takes a pole in the front and a pole in the rear. I usually use my hiking poles for that, but as you know, actually, I don't know if the video will be out, but I made my own carbon fiber tent poles for this when I'm bikepacking. I made a video, but I don't know if it's out yet. Because this video is probably going to come out sometime in September. Uh, secondly, the stakes. So I'm a big fan of very minimal stakes. And this is the type of ground that I'm used to in Ontario. It's kind of like soft ground. The first two days, actually, I had to pound these in. So I, I now understand, like, you individuals who are, like, hiking up in the mountains and there's rocky areas and stuff, totally get it. But uh, so for me, I use six-inch on the four corners and then the, the front and back for the big guy line i use nine inch because that's kind of the ones that let go the most so keep that in mind like six uh six ten so six ten stakes is all used for this thing in my old age i have a neo air light that's what i use as a sleeping pad i used to use just like a little half inch foam thing but man those days are over oh i think i felt the raindrop Anyway, yeah, so I use that. I forget how much it weighs, like seven ounces or something. It's pretty comfy. No issues whatsoever. And believe it or not, I use a pillow. I use a pillow now. I never used to. I just used to use my clothes. This is what I have. The Eros Pillow, ultralight large, sea to summit. I started bringing it because I found on some of like the really tough days, like a day like today, 
I need to be able to sleep. And, you know, if I'm wet or something like that, like, I don't know, I'm just getting old, it's, it becomes really difficult, you know, to get a good night's sleep without this stuff. So this is weighs like two ounces, this thing. This is seven ounces. But check this out. If you're watching this video, you're going to get a piece of information that's going to blow your mind right now. And so just listen. You guys know the company Enlightened Equipment? If you don't, go, go check it out. Guy's name is Tim who owns it. He's actually a buddy of mine. And in 2008 or 2009, before Enlightened Equipment was even around, he was making sleeping bags out of his basement, you know, and he'd make one a month or whatever it was, he'd sew them up. And so I contacted him and I said, I want to make a vapor barrier sleeping bag. And vapor barrier is when you use something that's non-breathable. You guys probably all have breathable sleeping bags. That's the way to do it. Don't do what I'm doing unless you really want to get into some uh, technical details. So he made me an 11 ounce sleeping bag. It's the world's lightest sleeping bag. There's actually a video. I think it's the second video I ever made. And it's pretty bad. But go back to the second video I ever made. It's called the world's lightest quilt or something. It's brutal. But this is it here. So the way it works is that this is actually Cuban fiber. It doesn't breathe. It's like plastic. And that uh, doesn't matter. Don't get into the vapor barrier stuff. Look it up online if you're, if you're interested in doing it. I'm not going to get into it. And then any moisture that does get through, I've got what's called a momentum material strip down the center here. And I use a quilt. I don't use a sleeping bag. Just a button around the side. And I get in. It's got a little foot box. This is 11 ounces. I can take it down to zero degrees Celsius. So after Tim made this for me, a bunch of other people wanted it. Long story short, Tim actually started Enlightened Equipment after, and now he's like, I think he's a millionaire. And I have the very first Epiphany sleeping bag that he ever made. It's a collector's item. He actually tries to buy it off me on a regular basis. Okay, that's kind of my sleeping setup because I know a bunch of you guys always want to know what gear that I've got. I use the, I put the gear lifts up, but I guess it's better in the video. So this is what I'll sleep in. I think most of you guys know this. I use aqua tabs to purify my water. Just a small little guy. I put two in there for two liters. And then because it tastes bad after, I put the noons. It's perfect. That way I purify two liters, I drink one, I fill, I fill, purify two liters, drink one. That's my technique. So for dinner tonight, Nomad, Nomad Nutrition Indian Red Lentil Stew. I've never tried this before, but it smells amazing. Oh yeah, that's the one. Now you guys know how I rock. For my stove, I use something like this. I rolled a rib in my 550 pot, 550 milliliter, and I use Esbit. I keep it simple, guys. I keep it simple when I'm on a solo mission. Just light the corner, it goes on the top. There's my lid. Oh yeah. And that's it. Toes are looking very white. Not sure why. But uh, keep an eye on those guys. They're not lifting at all, which is key. I had that problem in my last place. Ankles are not in good shape. Got some cuts on this side too. That's from my pedal strike by pushing it. It's pretty bad. Gotta clean it up in the tent. Oh, it looks a, bit, a little bit like baby food, but it's good. Spicy. Use a little bit more time. 
Here's a little, a little tip for you guys. <clears throat> Always put in more water than what they say and then open it up and stir it up a little bit and let it sit a little bit longer, let it cool down. And some of that water will help cook the uh, dehydrated veggies and, and meat a little bit better. These are my tips, my camping tips, in case you're wondering. It's real, I've just realized I've got a really bad gash right there. Oh yeah, it's actually pretty deep. Okay, I gotta clean and fix that guy up. so dirty too. Oh, gross. Pretty bad job, but that'll cover up those two big guys for a couple days until I clean it up properly. We're looking at the map because, you know, to be honest, the first three days have been pretty hellish. <laughs> so we're on Ramona right there. We're saying on the first site, it's actually very wonderful. There's that short portage that we took in this road. Uh, you know, once you get to like whiskey Jack or so right here seems to be in half decent shape, half decent shape because I was really concerned there. So I see here it turns into a primary road up here. That's that gray thing, which means that's going to be fantastic. So the question is, is do we hang a left and continue up here or do we continue down here? I think that's going to depend on what this looks like. Although there's a primary road right there too. Huh? Okay. Well guys, it'll be a game time decision. If we can make it to Brent, we're pretty much like past the finish line. That said, we're going to be up bright and early tomorrow morning hopefully ride all the way to Brent or Cedar. And then if we make it there, honestly, like the rest is uh, pretty straightforward. The only thing we have to worry about is uh, getting rested on the logging roads. See you tomorrow. tomorrow. My back. <sighs> These are the morning sounds of an old man. Good morning, day number four. Today is an exciting day because it's new sock day. You see, many of you don't know this, but you should if you look at the gear list. I only bring two pairs of socks. One to wear during the day, one to sleep in. Then every couple of days, I wash one, let it dry, and wear the other. And I've decided that today is the day. See these? And they're also higher, which means they'll protect the ankle from those killer bushes that destroyed both my hands and my shins and legs. We are going to pack up. Oh, time check? 728, look how frigging gorgeous it is here. This is an amazing sight. Oh, these shoes. Honestly, they smell like an old rotten sewer. I'm pretty sure it's gonna rain today. Food. It's closed, man. It, it, you know, if you don't wake up in the morning well, and you don't have a coffee, just put on soaking wet freezing clothes. Bam! You're ready to roll. Oh, these are, these are pretty dirty. I gotta clean these too. Yeah. All right, we're getting out of the tent. We are getting out of the tent. We are packing up. And that's how you leave a campsite. Ready for the next guys. Woo. All packed up. Let's go. So we are back at the portage uh, from Ramona Lake, the one that we came down. So we're going to head up here and head eastbound on the old logging road. 
So if you watched uh, yesterday's video, you'll see that it actually started to clear up a little bit. There's a few indications I saw on the, the logging road that make me think it's gonna get better. When you see clear cut trees, meaning like when there's been blowdowns and people have cut them with the chainsaw, that's a pretty good indicator that that's a well-used trail or that's the trail that people use. You could see for like six or seven hours yesterday that was not happening and it's happening here. I also noticed that the logging road becomes a primary logging road up here. Right now we're on like a secondary or an abandoned one, I'm not sure. So once we hit that, it should be good. Honest to God, today will all depend on whether or not the roads are clear. If they're not clear, we have to bail on the trip. I can't make it around the, to Cedar in even three days bushwhacking. If they're clear and we make it to Cedar, whew, sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. I'm still in good spirits. I'm a little bit beat up. My fingers are cut up, my legs are cut up. But other than that, I got energy. You know, in for another 12 hour day. Got my fanny pack, very important. It's a portage. And it literally just started to like pretty much pour. Awesome. We're heading down this way. Oh yeah, that's actually much better. <laughs> so yesterday I didn't go into too much detail, but the plants as you're riding through like all the alders and stuff, they just ripped my shins and my hands apart. So I'm gonna put on my rain pants, even though I usually wouldn't. Um, I don't know if you can see, like it's just so red on each side. Oh, it's a little bit harder on that one because I got the tattoo, but put these on, it gives me a little bit of protection even though it's not pouring rain. So, in case you're wondering. It's a prime area for wildlife. So I'm starting the camera early. I guess nothing right now, but look how gorgeous that is, eh? Look at that. <sighs> Beautiful. Look at that. Sure is pretty in here. I love being in the middle of parks like this. Just so far away from everybody. <clears throat> okay, well, the trail's getting a little bushy again. I ain't gonna lie. Just a tad bushy, and you're not gonna believe it. I ripped my rain pants, they caught in my chain. Look, look, look. These were brand new before this trip. I'm so upset. I'm gonna have to uh, perform a little surgery, if you know what I mean. I think you guys do know. A little bit of uh, bear bag wire. A little knot, fix that up tonight. All right, we're gonna hike up this hill. Now this is a logging road, guys. I wonder if we're here. I wonder if it becomes the logging road proper. Oh man, can you imagine the speed? Woo! Woo! Oh, mood change 100%. Oh, thank you. Thank you, whoever did this. Thank you. Okay, time check. It's 10 a.m. We've been going for an hour and 15 minutes from Ramona. So keep that in mind if you're gonna do this. Hour and 15 minutes from Ramona, it opens up. But don't let this friggin' road fool you, man. Because in like, you know, two kilometers, it could be a full overgrown bush. But we're getting rolling. Yeah. Baby. The map, we're actually right there where the road turns into the uh, primary logging road. So we're three kilometers away from when we're gonna go left. We'll see how that looks. Could be bad, could be good, but we'll see. All 
That's the portage. Time to do a little bit of off-roading. And this takes us about a kilometer down. I took a look at the logging road just before this as that meets up with this portage. It doesn't look like it's in good shape. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Oh, nice wide portage. So this has been, this has been all downhill. I actually had to slow down to get the camera out because it's so steep. Man, I would hate to portage up this thing. It's like a three kilometer portage. And honestly, it's basically uphill the whole way. It's terrible. Oh. That's it. That's the logging road. I'm really hoping that it's just really built up in the front here. I'm going to go through the side, see if there isn't an easier way. That does not look fun. Okay, it's bad. It's bad. It's as bad as yesterday. So, looks like we got like two or three kilometers. Don't really see what other option we have. And then, it, then we can cross and we can pray to the Lord that this here is cleared. Okay. It's not possible. It's actually not possible. Like, I don't know if you can see. We're going back. We're taking a different route. We're taking the, the main logging road up to uh, Brent and then we'll backtrack. It's the only way that this trip is going to be a success. I can't risk, I can't risk Bushwhacking for three kilometers and then having to bushwhack all the way up to Brent. The risk is too high. Maybe I'll go scout it another day, but uh, if I want to get this trip done, I can't do this. Like, look at this. This is insane, guys. And it's relentless. So, let's get back to the portage. We'll go all the way up to the top. We'll take the logging road down. Actually, I got to look at the map when we get there. But I only know that this, this is not the route. Maybe we can hit the portage just over there. Oh. I'm back. Okay, remember how I was saying how awesome it was going down? How I felt bad for anybody that has to come up? That was some work. Okay. New plan, but let's just boogie down the road a little bit before I get into it. So I'm gonna look at some maps. Got some speed. I got the deep hunger kicking in. I'm just trying this for the first time. RX bar. This one's like walnut and banana. It's pretty good. It's actually a part of the Petawawa River. I don't know what part. I gotta look it up, but that's what it says on the map. <clears throat> Let's go over the map and tell you the route that we're taking now. But I gotta get it out. It's actually ripped. We are right here. Right at that bridge. We're 19 kilometers to here, and I would guess that we're probably equal up to Cedar. So, we've got 40 kilometers to go, which is huge, and it's probably not going to be easy. But the other way, you saw, just wasn't possible. I would rather do the guaranteed route and actually get there, even if it takes me two days. But then we got to backtrack. So, and this is the rail trail here. And it breaks off the logging road. So it'll take me two hours to get to the end and then up the rail trail. Friggin' brutal. So just met for a crew of four portaging. Super nice. Guys, they're actually going to Brent as well. You know what the crazy thing is? is I've got about 40 kilometers to bike to get to Brent. 
and it's only six kilometers to Brent uh, as the crow flies. I almost considered swimming there to be honest, but uh, anyway, we're ready to go. Logging notes. Just plugging away. Nothing else going on. So narrow camp five is there and that's Bissett. So this must be the same road that goes all the way from Radiant. Or yeah. See where I'm gonna hook up with this. Okay, this makes sense now. This makes sense. Okay, so we go left then. This should be pretty good. I remember these roads. They aren't as bad as Dear Lord that one. So who knows what's down there? Alright. Two o'clock. We're gonna take this road up to the old railway. Take the railway north into uh, Brent, Cedar Lake. If I've got the energy. Second treasure find. The old time. Actually, that's the third treasure find. Some kind of dirt road as you hop off Bissett towards the railroad. Looks like this is about three kilometers long. I don't even know what this is. You know, some kind of, I don't know, some kind of four wheel drive. Just imagine, no one gets to see this part of Algonquin. So this trail eventually veers left and the rail trail goes right. So we gotta backtrack a bit. No big deal. Just more work and more energy. Plenty where that came from. On the rail trail, I actually forgot how loose, hairy and angry it was. It's Jamie's favorite, by the way. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Oh, so. I rode this with two of my good buddies last year from one side of the park to the other. This is the old abandoned rail trail. It's a wicked, wicked trip, man. And if you book the right campsites, we stayed one on the little peninsula on Cedar, which was unbelievably gorgeous. And then we stayed on Traverse, which is totally good as well. The one by the parking lot, but you gotta, when you got bikes, you gotta pick the close ones. Okay, so we're back on the rail trail. We just came here now. We're by probably Odenback Station or something along those lines. And we need to head up here to Cedar. That's where we camped last year on the trail. Well, let me go here. So, you know, we're, we're 20K away. We're 20K out. So we're, you know, easy three, probably four hours on this. I can't imagine any, uh, any less. So we'll be there at 637. I forgot how much scenic the rail trail is than the logging roads. To be honest, the logging roads are pretty, pretty bare. This rail trail is just great through the center of that park. Got our first little issue here. Open that. This is not a big deal. Okay.
No joke, there's a pickup truck coming. Am I in trouble? No, no. no. So actually, super cool uh, family. Um, they're going to check out the bridge up here. Ooh, that's the portage sign. And there's the portage back there, which means we've been coming around here. Uh, yeah, which means we're right here. Holy, I didn't think I was gonna make it. I probably got 10K left. I don't know what my face looks like, but I bet it's red, man. I am hot. But it's 3.30. It's actually 3.10. So this is gonna be awesome. The store will probably be open. I heard they sell ice cream. And I could use a little bit, I could use a morale booster. I don't know if you guys could tell, but. <laughs> You know, I've kind of been like a whiny little baby and I totally get it. I totally get that you guys will be mad at me for that. Um, but I'm anticipating the ice cream making it better. Let's go. It's my motivation to get there. Oh, actually it's that pickup truck. Woo. Oh man, I forgot how awesome these bridges are. I wonder if I could take a wicked picture here by lodging the wheels in there. Oh man, some of these are not sturdy. Okay, let's get out of here. Oh. A little bit of water here. These hit the spot. Oh, these are good. You know, you gotta love when you see a sign like this, road closed, and it's just peppered with shot. <sighs> Obviously someone disagrees that this road should not be closed. See now this is the campsite that I reserved for tonight. Well, it's the one I was planning to use assuming no one is there. You can see that people take you know, they're ATVs or something like that, and someone's built a little uh, sh shrine or something, like a little indicator. So, let's see what time it is. It's four o'clock. Um, you know, we're not too far from Brent. Whoops, sorry. It's four o'clock, so we're not too far from Brent. A couple kilometers, I'm gonna rip up there. I actually am gonna see if I can camp at that campsite. And then if not, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go up here, I'm gonna take a look to see if anyone's there. If not, I'll come back and camp here, but it'd be great to stay at the main campsite because then I can like use the beach, put my chair out and just relax a little bit. Today's been a, what's the word that we're looking for? An exciting day, very exciting. So there it is, no canoes. Looks like it might be open. need to figure out where to go. Ooh. Well, we did it. Fortunately, everything is closed. Now that you do not know. 
So we have to figure something out. Or, yeah. All right, guys. So as an update, I have Cedar Lake booked. Just talking to Jake. He's the guy that owns Algonquin Outfitters. He actually told me if I head up here to the parking lot where everyone like launches their canoes, stick to the left where the grass road is, you can actually bike to the campsite. Um, so a little bit closer than that one there. Oh, you know, I think I remember seeing these. I think you have to bike the old rail trail. I'm going back to that site, Cedar Lake South. And if it's taken, then I'm just sleeping anywhere I can find. But there's nowhere available here. And Jake, the owner of Algonquin Outfitters, uh, he does not have anywhere for me to stay. We're about 45 minutes out. And we're back. Still no canoe. So I can be there in 10 minutes. I don't see anybody canoeing there. This could be the one. We could get that site again. That site is awesome. Remember, this little trail. Here it is. Looks like someone's made another fire pit right where I used to put my tent. Ah, I still got room for a tent over there. Usually I do the fire pit out here. Oh, this is exactly how I remember it. Let's take a look at the beach. Oh. make a fire but tonight we can have a late night we don't have to go to bed early and that is because there is some scheduling conflicts with the logging road that need to be met you can't ride the logging road immediately in the morning so for that reason we're gonna stay up late and we're gonna have a fire I've collected this wood and I've got the five ounce folding buck saw which everybody wants prototype version number two and it works wonderful and make quick work of this and there this is my lumber pile. And tonight, Irish Shepherd's Pie. I've never had this before, but it's again from Nomad Nutrition. Yesterday's was delicious, so I'm looking forward to this. Looks good, it smells amazing. Mm -mm. I can hear thunder. It's coming. It's a coming. Oh, wow. I can't believe how much lightning there is. There's a storm brewing, guys. Everybody inside. Holy shit. Holy shit. Oh my God. Okay, we're in for it. We're in for it tonight. I had no idea that was coming. What the hell kind of thunder is that? Can you guys hear that? Wait for it. Holy shit. That might be an alien invading Earth. That ain't thunder and lightning, man. So it's 4 a.m. And guess what woke me up? This guy trying to get in my tent. Can you see him? Buddy, you're not allowed in the tent, man. 
I actually he freaked me out because he came in through the side of the tent trying to jump like I don't know. Anyway, he needs to go. Oh, that usually means time to get up. Oh man. 903. That's a new world record for sleeping in. We gotta put the toe cap on that puppy, I'm pretty sure. Okay, let me give you the details of today and why we are sleeping in so late. I think I might have told you yesterday. Today, we're hitting the logging roads again, but it's a Monday. Monday means that the loggers will be working. So, you can't ride those roads during the day. Uh, I've been on the roads when a logging truck goes by and it's actually not safe. So, I don't want to do that. I've got about two or three hours before I get to the logging roads and the loggers stop, you know, roughly around 5, 4.30, 5.30. So, we're going to stay at camp, clean up everything, dry everything out, head down the railroad, the abandoned railroad, and by the time we get to the logging road, it should be, you know, 4, 4.30, we'll rest for an hour, then we'll hit the logging road. So, today's kind of like a half zero day, which is kind of good actually. So let's get cleaned up here and then head out. Oh, by the way, can somebody remind me, just remind me, I don't care how you do it, to make a pair of camp shoes? The last couple of trips I've been on, I don't know if it's just this year, but there's been so much rain and I cannot be bothered putting on my wet shoes to go do like, you know, go to the bathroom at night or hang the bear bag or whatever. Just some closed cell foam, cheapy, easy, cut with an X-Acto knife. And maybe we'll make a video of it, but I just want some camp shoes, like some legitimate camp shoes. A little bit of firewood for the next guys. It's coming up to around noon. We are going to pack up. Actually, we are packed up. We're heading off. Let's just take a look at the beauty. Time is 1.30, we've made it back to the logging road, a little bit earlier than we expected. I'm trying to decide what to do. Like, do we risk it or what, right? The active logging looks to be much more south. So I think we head up here at least to the first campsite, see what happens. And then take a look at the map from there. We'll come up, we'll raise that split, we'll come off. So let's head up here. Well, that's where we came from yesterday. This is where we're going today. Bissett and uh, Narrow Camp 5. Ooh. Little Madawaska to Phillips Lake. This is the portage. You know, people who are doing this portage would be pretty deep in the park. So good for you if you're out here. The deer flies are next level for some reason. Look at them. Where are they? Oh, they're all over me. They're biting through my shirt actually. Okay, still playing the game of if we should continue or if we should stop, but I'm just gonna reassess with some maps over here off the logging road. There's 
like a legitimate trailer or cottage back here. Crazy. right there. Just ducked down this portage. That was Ontario uh, Ministry of Natural Resources trucks. Three of them brand new parked there. So this is the Crow River to Crow River portage. Uh, I don't know why you need to portage. Maybe there's some rapids or something or it gets too shallow. Anyway. Oh. Beep, beep, beep. Kind of scared me right there. Okay, we're pushing up the portage. So the cars are still there. You can see fresh tracks like they just came in today. I wonder where they are. Or what they're doing or if they're in the car sleeping or something. Well, I'm just gonna risk it guys. Can't wait here all day. Don't they stop me, they stop me. Whatever. Oh. what it looks like to come in, chop a little clearing. There's a whole bunch of them all the way down here. You can see their select cutting in there. So what they do is they go in and they cut like, I'm not sure how they do it, but like every third tree. So it sort of keeps the forest, but just uh, less dense, that's all. And that's how they justify it. It's hard to see, but you can see it all in there. Bat cave, I wonder what that means. If I wasn't so exhausted, I'd go check it out, but I'm making time here. And I'm still nervous that those three Ministry of Natural Resource trucks are going to scoot up behind me and do something. I think something's coming. I think a car is coming. It is a fucking car. So they saw me, but they kept driving. I don't know what that means. I'm going to put a new battery in the camera to see if they turn around and come talk to me. Nothing so far. We good? Cars were packed too. Like a lot of people in them. Dare I say we're home free? I don't know. So we're actually making some good time. There was just some huge downhills. You know what, I've got a rhythm. I've got a rhythm of how to ride these hills because it's just up and down, up and down. And some of the big, huge ones, it's not even worth like wasting all your energy going up it. It's better just to walk them because you'll, you'll, you'll see they have these huge ones and then they're like, and then they have these huge ones again. The huge ones don't bother going up. But I just pulled up the GPS. Looks like we're right here at the middle of Thomas Lake. Here's Thomas Lake right there. And we are making a left right there. So we are like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're 10K, 10K to our left, which is awesome, man. I'll take that any day. I'm going to drive by and whatever happens, happens, man. Fuck it. I don't hear anything. Holy crap, eh? That's what they're doing, guys. That's what they're doing in the park.
You can see the size of this thing compared to my bike. The tires are six feet tall. Look at this thing. It's crazy. Oh, if this is it. I don't have a lot of faith. And that's supposed to be the primary. You can imagine what the secondary looks like once you get to the end of that. Okay. Oh. Apparently this is it. So let's go down here for a bit. We'll figure out what to do once we find out what it turns into. I want to check the GPS quickly. Oh, what is that? There's a huge downhill here. So I didn't want to go down unless we're verified that we need to. And this is it. So I have a bad, bad feeling about the end of this, just to let you know. Kilometer marker one on the tree. So at least we'll know how far in we are. And uh, yeah, we got about, what time is it? 7.30, we have an hour of sunlight left. So. Maybe we can do 5k, something like that. Would be great if we could. Looks like there's gonna be a lot of places to camp too. I mean, anywhere off here would be good. We're moving. We're moving, like it or not. Almost ate it. Almost ate it huge. Did you catch him? It's a black bear sitting on the sitting on the road. You take off the bushes. You hear? Woo! Sun's just going down. We gotta pull the headlamp out soon. We haven't found a campsite yet. To be honest, I'm just ripping down this road waiting for it to end. I don't know if you guys caught the black bear on the GoPro or not. It was just sitting in the middle of the road. I, I turned it on, but it takes like maybe like two or three seconds. So I think I maybe you just caught the bum. As I keep telling you guys, I see bears, but by the time I pull the camera out, they're gone. So anyway, I gotta hurry up. I gotta, I gotta make sure we can get there in time. Yeah, they don't want us to cross. I gotta check the GPS. I think that's the place to go and it looks like there's no bridge either fuck there's no bridge I do not believe we have a choice it's a soaker fuck it it's a soaker guys and we'll dry off tonight maybe it won't be that bad The best part of that whole thing, I wish I had it on camera, I actually tried to ride across it. I tried to ride across it and honestly, I almost did a full mud bath with me and my bike. I just saved it, just saved it. Oh my God, I'm so lucky, but soaked on the feet, whatever. Nothing I'm not used to. I don't know if you can see that, we have a situation, a serious one. Might be able to cross on the side there. That's all water. This is not what I wanted to do at like nine o'clock at night. 
we're going to find a place to camp because we are done, ladies and gentlemen. Just done. Make way, guys. Coming through. Make way. Well, it's late. The trail continues down that way. It's not that bad, actually. This is our campsite. I'm going to set up basically, basically right on the trail here. Looks like this will be fine. If any animals want to get by, they've got this thing right there. And uh, yeah, see you in the tent. I'm not going to show much more than this. Good evening. Good evening. Well, today was an exciting day. Evading the police. No, just kidding. <clears throat> but it did add a little bit to the excitement. Okay. Um, we have basically made it to the very last day where there will be significant challenges, which is tomorrow. I actually, to be honest, this trip has been like an emotional roller coaster. I didn't think I was even going to get to Brent. Like, I don't know if you guys remember a couple days ago, that bushwhacking and stuff. I, I really didn't think I was going to get there. And I thought if I get to Brent, I'm good. Like, I, even if I bail from there. Anyway, we've now pushed on. We are, I don't know, 10 kilometers from Opiongo South, or uh, the Algonquin Outfitters at Opiongo. Once we get there, it's like free sailing, Highway 60, a couple of rural roads. Like, there's challenges in terms of like stamina and biking, but not like navigational and water and this and that. Tomorrow morning, uh, we're gonna, I don't think we have to bushwhack, but this road is gonna get worse for sure, so it's gonna be a little bit tough. There's also a large water crossing, much larger than any of the water crossings that we've seen. So much so that um, I think I have to swim it. If there's no bridge, I, I don't know if my bike will float with everything inflated. I doubt it. The other option is I notice there's like a ton of campsites there. Maybe I could flag someone down and ask them to canoe me across. The only thing I could think of, because um, I'm not going back. I'd rather die. I'd rather die in the woods. And then to kind of summarize, uh, you know, on trips like this that are a little bit challenging in terms of like a lot of rain, a lot of navigation, getting lost, very long days. Like even today, even though we left at 10, 30, 11, I didn't get to camp until nine. You know, I'm on the bike for 10 hours. I want to show you some of my injuries. How's that? That looks like skin. So this is my feet, my legs, my knee. This side's bad too. Um, I've got really bad, that's from my pedal and pushing so much. My pedal strikes kept hitting there over and over again. All along there. And then my toe, my toe has delaminated. You guys remember, I don't want to touch it. It's got a problem. And then the top of my toes here are starting to blister for some reason. The inside of my foot here. And then this stuff you can't really see, but you know, from all that bushwhacking, that's what you get. That's what you get. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're on these types of trips, that there's a lot of stuff that can, uh, that can happen outside of just like, you know, getting lost or whatever. You gotta be healthy. You know, a couple days ago, I never told you guys, I had like a little bit of a stomach problem, to be honest. And I thought maybe I drank some bad water. I've had Giardia before. It's terrible, but uh, it cleared up and it's no problem. So let's shut down think about how much energy we will need to push on and if we get to Opiongo tomorrow my god if they sell beer there i'm buying a beer can you hear the owl listen there he goes he's calling out for his lover Good morning! This is our campsite. Every morning I like to go over a plan with you guys and do a little monologue. I don't know why, it just feels like the right way to start off a video. We are one day away from completing uh, the uncertainty of this. I don't know if you heard that, something in the woods. Um, the one day away from completing the uncertainty of this trip, meaning that we will no longer have 
the uh, questionable gray area logging roads. I have two options this morning. I was looking at the map. Option A is go back to where we came up to the logging road that is completely clear. Take that down to the town there. I forget what it's called, like Madawaska maybe or something like that. And then cut in on Highway 60 up to Opiongo. That will add about 20 kilometers to the trip, but it is guaranteed. You know what I mean? Like it's guaranteed to happen. Option number two is here. Was that A and this too? Whatever. This represents pain and suffering for everybody involved, including you, because I'm going to share it with you. So I'm going to close my eyes. You're going to tell me, do we go with option A, which is a wonderful ride, pleasant, wonderful people, everything's amazing. Option A or option two. Pain and suffering and clearly a trip that men my age should not be doing. Close my eyes. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm uh, receiving your thoughts. We're going down there. Are you a stuffer or a roller? That's today's question. Semi good vibes so far, semi good vibes. You know, certainly not completely open. But every kilometer that we knock off like this, one less kilometer of bushwhacking if it does actually close up. Some larger challenges. Sun is out. It's friggin' beautiful. Just a little section here by the water. You can see a lake and hear some rushing water. So I just caught a glimpse of that rushing water, it looks like a dam. It actually looks like a dam, and I wonder if that dam isn't how the old logging, you can't see, I, I gotta get somewhere closer, but oh, I wonder if, uh, if that dam is how they used to cross. Or maybe it's not a dam, maybe it's like some kind of bridge, but it looks, looks like it's got those boys. Anyway, it shouldn't be much further. But that's a big crossing. That's a big crossing if there's nothing to do. I'm not gonna be able to do it with my bike, that's for sure. All right, one challenge at a time. Quit being a baby. Let's go. Looks like it's a significant engineering masterpiece. I think the best route is right along here. And the sooner we get it done, the better. Just to get it out of the way. So, you know, good thing we try and keep the shoes dry, right?
much less dramatic than I thought. Let's get out of here. See, so we take these challenges one at a time. Not a big deal. Cross that off the list. There's also a guy in a boat over there. I don't know if you can see him. Just that way. If this is it. I sincerely believe we may have some bushwhacking now. So right from the bridge, this will go straight and then right. Just gonna scout a bit to make sure that we're going the right way. The terrain has gotten extremely rough very quickly. So no big deal, but we do want to make sure. So yeah, I guess we gotta do some work over these logs. It's all right. The good thing was that the dam wasn't a big deal. So now we just gotta figure out how to get through this stuff. I'm actually thinking <clears throat> that maybe we just go through the woods here. Might get a little bit easier line than this. A jugular. <clears throat> I believe this is the way. What's happening here? Okay, <clears throat> what do you think guys? Looks better. I know some of you are thinking, Steve, this is terrible. And it is. <clears throat> but what you have to understand is that it's better than the bushwhacking that I've done in the past. So, let's just see what happens. There isn't really a trail anymore, a little bit of a game trail. That's about it. Oh my. Oh my. So, I decided just to go straight through the meat. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit dense that way. I looked in the inside, it looked like just as much pain as just going straight through and maybe this is the last one. There's one other uh, challenge that we have, well we have two, we have to wait for the active logging road, but the second challenge is that there's this thing here, Camboose Camp. I don't know what that is, I have no idea what that means, if that's a ranger station, if that's like a private camp, but we go right by it, so I anticipate, you know, having to go fast and not look at it. Couple more blowdowns. Okay. Oh my god, it's like chocolate milk coming out of these things.
on trips of this length, foot care management is very important. You don't want to be struggling. Even my insoles, watch this. Terrible, just terrible. Hoping that this is my last water crossing though. We are taking a five minute break to dry the feet, make sure the toenails don't come off and squeeze out some of the excess water from the soles of our shoes and our socks. I wanted to introduce you to something that I picked up this year, the Garmin InReach Mini. Now, you guys know that I love navigating. I actually really enjoy uh, map and compass orienteering. Um, so I try my best to do that on almost all my trips. And up until this year, that's all I've ever done. On all my trips previously, it was all map and compass. Um, I find that in the last like couple of years, I'm starting to do some trips that are a little bit more like off the beaten path, I guess, you know, something like this, where it's really confusing, really hard. Um, it's tough to judge mileage and stuff like that. So I have invested in this and I also bring my smartphone, um, which has, I think it's called earthware or something, earth or something. Anyway, what I do on something like this trip is... I use this primarily for messaging my wife, to be honest. Every day I have uh, two presets, my wife, Perry, who you've met, and um, my sister, Krista, who you have not met. Oh, you know what? Actually, I think I did a video a long time ago. I think she was in it. So every night when I get to my campsite, I just send a preset message saying like, hey, I'm okay, and it tells me where they are. You can actually um, send um, custom messages, but it's really hard because there's no keypad. So if you guys are old like me, you'll remember back in the day when you wanted to send a text, you had to like, if you wanted to do A, B, or C, you'd have to press like two, one, two, and that would give you a B. This hat is even worse. It's just got an up, down, an entire scroll of the alphabet. So it takes quite a while to write something. I think there's a limit as well. So I only use it for the preset messages for the most part. Um, I've not linked this to the phone. I find that the phone with that um, Earth map, whatever it's called, uh, software works pretty well. Now, let me tell you how I actually put this trip together and got it into the GPS. So I took Jeff's map and, you know, did some research. Actually, I took a bunch of maps, took the back road map book, but that's garbage. Don't ever buy that. Um, but basically Jeff's maps, I looked at all the logging roads and where I could connect it to. And then I went on Google Earth and I zoomed in as much as I could to see where roads existed to make sure they still existed. And honestly, the parts that I couldn't see on Google Earth are the parts that I was bushwhacking. Like actually here, I'm pretty sure I could still see it, but I know on day three, I think it was day three on the way to Ramona, I remember not being able to see it and thinking, oh, you know what? They're probably just like trees have overgrown. Probably you can go underneath. I didn't realize how bad it was gonna be. So um, that's what I do. So I, 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 I plot it in Google Earth then I export it and I import it into the Garmin software and it puts it on my phone. It's actually amazing. And the phone is, I don't know, I never knew. Like the GPS is good. You just press it, it tells you where you are everywhere. And I don't have my, uh, I don't have any service. It just works like that. So that works pretty good. Um, if you want me to send you a message, you gotta be one of my presets. Comment below and I'll add you. I won't really, but anyway. Five more minutes and we'll get going. Have you seen what's up there? Look, already. It's brutal. It's brutal. <laughs> Thank you. 
My guess is that we have made it to the logging road proper, the primary one. I think anyway. So we're at the road. I, my understanding is that that's where the actual active logging is. But you can see the road isn't even cleared here. So, you know, I was thinking like, that's just the plan. Maybe there's no one actually on this road today. So what I'm gonna do is we're probably an hour from Opiongo. I'm not gonna do much filming. It's gonna let her rip. And honestly, man, if I get caught, I get caught. If I don't, perfect. But it, I'm not gonna sit here for five hours when the road's not even cleared. Okay, let's go. We did it. We did it. Well, I've got a park permit. And this is it, man. Oh, beautiful. Oh. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Oh, now we're going to get the picture. Say goodbye to Opiango Algonquin Outfitters. There was nothing much to do there. Chatted with him. There was no ice cream. I actually met a really nice guy uh, just outside. He was actually a rep hockey and lacrosse player. Just started camping and he loves it. So I don't know. It's nice to hear that you know people are finding out about camping and enjoying it. I think it's kind of a, a very um, responsible thing to teach your kids how to do tough it out in the wilderness anyway we're gonna try and make our way to lake of two rivers or something like that down the old rail trail across the main campground at mew lake probably three four hours of biking We are pumped. Oh my God. So I've confirmed that this is the road we need to take. It takes us to Rock Lake. It's the end of the Algonquin uh, Rail route or whatever it is. Um, in case you haven't noticed, I'm not showing any footage from Highway 60 because it's absolutely terrible. Like any of the any of the, the the highways, I'm just not. It's a waste. It's a waste of battery. It's not even exciting. But we're headed down here. Welcome to Rock Lake Campground or Rock Lake. Okay, here's the cool part. This is where the old rail trail starts, the actual official one, not the illegal one that I did last year, like the one here. And this will take us right to Mew Lake. There's a store there, there's a restaurant, and we're gonna see if we can get a campsite. I don't know what's gonna happen, but let's see. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of people here. It should be relatively flat, so it's not that big a deal. We'll just have some fun. And because it's actually an old railway, um, the grade has to be very low either way. I think 
So that's what's nice about taking this as opposed to Highway 60, which might, well, first of all, is terrible and has some undulating ups and downs. This here is gonna be awesome. I'm very excited about this. 12 kilometers, it'll take me two hours probably. I'm just gonna cruise. Ooh. Nobody knows where that goes. Guys, funny enough, they have a campsite at Mew Lake, number eight, and it's actually an electrical site. It's the only one they had left. So I get a little electrical site, and I'm telling you, people are going to laugh their ass off when they see my little tent at an electrical site. They're gonna think it's amazing. Right now we're gonna go to Lake of Two Rivers store and see what they have there. Then we're gonna go set up. Did you see that menu? Oh man. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. This is the plan. We're gonna go to the site. We're gonna set the site up. That's what we're gonna do first. Hang the food, get everything ready. Then I'm gonna go buy a bag or two of firewood. Maybe some kindling. I don't know. I gotta, I'm gonna figure out how I'm gonna start that thing. Bring that back. Then I'm gonna come around 7:30, 8 o'clock, right, just as it's getting dark, and buy a burger and fries and bring it back to my campsite and gnaw it. That's the plan. Best part is that I'm sleeping with all the campers because it's an electrical site. So guys, this is actually the funniest thing in the world. So I'm in the RV camping area <laughs> with my little bike and my little tent and everyone's like, what the hell is this guy doing? Like, take a look around. It's honestly the best. So we're all set up. Mission number one is figure out how to get some wood here. I'm gonna buy some from the office. Thinking about strapping it to the front. Okay. Let's see if this works or if I die. Balancing trick. I said it couldn't be done. Firewood, pit, chair, tent. Now we just need to get some food. I've got so much, so much to show you. Just hold on, you'll, you'll see. <laughs> All you need to know is be very, very excited. This is gonna be my kindling today, guys. <clears throat> completely disappointed with the accuracy of this map. Here we go. It's waterproof. I'm not joking. It's a waterproof map, but I can't cut it. It's amazing. Does it even burn? It does burn. Goodbye, my map. That's what I think of the Kearney map. Now let me show you what else we got. Okay. Don't be mad. Oh, man. Did you see that? And, and, a Caesar salad, and a Schweppes. So I'm going to take the evening off and just relax, but I'll see you guys just before I go to bed. I'm just gonna, just gonna relax. That's all I'm gonna do.
day number seven. I'm getting awful jealous. Now I'm waking up trying to find a place to get some water. And I'm seeing these guys cooking like bacon and eggs and pancakes. And I'm like, hey, uh, can I get some of that? Got a big day today. Big day. Today is Mew Lake to Oxtong or Ragged Falls. Primarily along Highway 60, but this is the most beautiful part of Highway 60. Oh, this is the guy that I met yesterday. He's got a pretty cool trailer, actually. I thought I was going to go in there and take a look at it, but I didn't meet his wife. I only met him, and it was only his wife there, so I should know who it was. So, all right, let's get some things together and get moving. So Mew Lake Campground in Algonquin is one of the car camping and RV camping places, but I've never been. It's actually quite nice. Like, even look at the beach. Yeah, I get this area might not be the best, but I mean, look, it's got sand. And look at the steam or the fog coming off. It's pretty nice. Someone's left their canoe, the Algonquin Outfitters canoe. It's tough to leave places like this, you know? You have such a mixed emotion. Um, I'll do this way so you can see me. Mixed emotion because, you know, the ruggedness of being in the backcountry <clears throat> is fantastic. But at the same time, you know, coming here, having the pizza, having the salad, buying firewood. Yeah, it's a nice break. It really is. I have no preference in style. I, I just like to have fun. As long as it's fun, I'm good. Site number eight, baby. So I just spent like 30 minutes talking to uh, the gentleman that I met yesterday and his wife. And uh, man, they're actually hilarious. So I hope he sends me a note. <laughs> I could have a beer with that guy. Um, all right, let's get the food down. Load up the bike. And I think, I think, I was gonna say this a little bit of a surprise. I think that Jamie might come meet me tonight to camp, which would be awesome because uh, he could probably bring some beer or some red wine or something. So let's get set up. I'm going to check my phone because I get signal along Highway 60 and I had an electrical site. So I was actually able to charge it to 100% yesterday. And if he comes and meets me, it will be fantastic. So let's get set up. On longer trips, uh, hygiene becomes more and more important. That's because like things can go bad pretty fast if you're not careful. Um, <laughs> sorry. You know, when it's like a day or two, um, you know, no big deal. But you go for a week or more and you gotta start making sure you're like a little bit clean. I found these things called towel tabs okay and they're basically like this hard it looks like a a mint almost anyway you just put it in your hand and let me see if i can adjust this a little bit and you just put a little bit of water and it basically absorbs the water maybe need a little bit more oh probably too much and turns into a mini towel and with that you can clean your face your armpit I don't know on some trips I bring them on longer ones I tend to bring them just to clean up a little bit so I look half decent I don't look like a bum all the time doesn't look that bad In case you're wondering what I do is I actually, I put all my snacks into this dry bag hanging in the tree, but during the day, I put them all in the frame bag to keep the center of gravity low. If there was any snacks I'm gonna use during the day, I just put in this convenient side pocket so I don't have to go into the big one. And actually, I'll 
left that at the bottom. We won't have that till later. Once the dry bag is empty, put my pot at the bottom. And I take my actual food bag. And that's how we pack the food. In here is GoPro and electronics, water, and on the front is basically everything that I need to camp. So all that stuff. You know what's sad? I can smell bacon from basically every single campsite around me. And this is my breakfast. It's not sad. I'm just jealous. Nothing wrong with being jealous. Okay. While we eat breakfast, I'm going to tell you a story. I only found out about this this morning, speaking with the neighbors. So apparently, when you're an RV person, there's like this snobbery about how big your RV is and how big your campsite is. So if you guys are RV people, let me know. Let me know in the comments if this is true or not, because this is what they told me. So I didn't want to put it on camera, but yesterday, a guy came to my campsite and was giving me a hard time about having such a huge campsite with such a small tent. You remember what it looks like, right? But the reality is I didn't pick the campsite. I just went to the front and said, do you have a campsite? I was lucky they even had one. They gave me this one and it has electricity. I'm actually able to charge my phone. So apparently, um, RVers or whatever you want to call them, if you got an RV, you really want to have a big campsite. I don't know why. I have no idea. That's why I'm actually asking you if it's true. And the person with like the biggest campsite, I don't know, is the toughest person. I have no idea. So they apparently had a smaller campsite than mine, but obviously had a trailer and were upset that I had just a tent. Anyway, we went back and forth for probably about five minutes trying to explain to the guy that I didn't pick the campsite. Like, you know, he was telling me to move down by the lake and there was this other one available and I'm like, Dude, go talk to the warden or something. Like, I don't do anything. I don't have anything to do with this. I'm just sitting. I'm, uh, they just gave it to me. Anyway, then the neighbors came over and explained, like, why that situation happened. I guess he was upset that my site was quite large and I had a small tent. And his site was smaller and he had a trailer. So, uh, anyway, that's for the park to work out. Not for me. And the rest of my stuff goes in here. And the last thing is the tent. As a side note, you know I've been using my do-it-yourself titanium tent stakes. The tops, even with the updated design, are looking pretty bad. I'm going to make these out of uh, either aluminum or titanium. I'm going to see what's available and the size. Because um, I really like these. I really like these a lot. I just need, I need some more strength, some beefiness. Let's put them right here. Put them on a little bit loose until we get it centered. Done. And that clips on the outside of this. There's actually some additional clips that go around back to keep it snug. Say goodbye to Mew Lake Campground. We are hitting Highway 60. So exciting. Highland Backpacking Trail, which I also have a video up on my YouTube channel if you want to check it out. I did it a couple years ago. It might have even been five, I can't remember. But it's beautiful. It's wonderful, actually. Little Highway 60 trail find. 
don't know if I mentioned to you, but the bike's making some weird noises. Might be on its last legs. I'll let you listen right after this truck goes by. So that truck was flying. You know what? There's just there's just too many cars. There's too many cars. Here we go, let's listen. I don't know if that's bearings or chain or what, but I'll have to get it looked at. Hopefully it makes it through. Just basically 24 hours all I need. Trailer light. Oh, entire trailer assembly light. The Highway 60 finds are kind of fun. Also, moose coming up. Not good. Not good. Roll up guy. I really like them. I've been bringing them for the last couple of years. They, don't, they have probably no nutritional value whatsoever. Oh man. During the day, they're nice. The Portage store. Okay, we have confirmed, in addition to the team, later today, Mr. Jamie McCharles will be joining me. So he had mentioned it, I had mentioned it, and now we've confirmed it. He's going to meet me tonight at Ragged Falls. Um, the concern that I'm having right now, because there's always challenges, there's always challenges, is like what the campsite looks like. I'm going to feel really bad if it's a shit campsite and the guy drives all the way up here, you know, bring some beers and whatever else it is. And then it's like one of the campsites I had earlier on in the trip. So I've noticed that around that area, Oxtongue, Ragged Falls, there's a bunch of places. And like when I say places, it looks like there's a hostel and it looks like there's a, like a bed and breakfast and stuff. I might just roll into town because it's only like a kilometer past Ragged Falls just to see if there's like, you know, or actually how about this? I might roll into town, talk to Oxtongue Outfitters to see what the campsite looks like at Ragged Falls and where it is. Or alternatively, book a place in town that would be cool. So many cars. Highway 60 is terrible. Or book a place in town that would be fun and cool. Okay, we're done. Highway 60 trail finds. The West Gate. Say it ain't so. The West Gate. You know how we roll. I don't even know what that means, but the West Gate's basically, you know, close to the end of Algonquin. After this, it's the home stretch. I'm gonna take a picture of this thing right here. Okay, picture is taken. We're gonna hit the washroom quickly and then we're gonna relax. I think that's what we need to do. Just for one hour and put a plan together. And this shaded area definitely looks like a place we could do it. Oh. So sometimes when you're using a public washroom and your entire life is on your bike, you just take it with you, man. You can't risk someone stealing it. You don't know how lucky I am. I was at this sign. I went all the way over to the bathroom and I left this here. Thank God no one took it. Thank God no one took it, man.
a lot of important stuff in here. Anyway, those are the mistakes, man, that can make or break a trip. Now, on this late in the trip, probably no big deal, but if it was earlier, it would have been a problem. So, you know, don't let fatigue get to you. All right, relax time. 10K to Oxtong. 10K to Oxtong. Along the wonderful, wonderful Highway 60. I'm actually giving it a hard time, but it's it's fine. A part of me thinks you need to like embrace the Highway 60 portion of this trip. I'm gonna um, put a narrative together at the end of it, but I think the reason why the Highway 60 portion is cool is that it's got all the amenities to make it just slightly easier. So after you do, you know, five, six days of grinding through the bush, you get a nice paved highway, you get restaurants, you get campgrounds with electricity. It's, it's part of the experience. It's part of the Minas Lake. It's part of Algonquin. The point of the trip is to experience all of Algonquin, the back country and the front country. I really like what I'm putting together here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put something together. Loggers. Well, you're welcome, my friends. Yes, you are. You're welcome for me visiting. Wait a second. I just found out where adventure begins. It wasn't back there. It was here. Look, the sign says so. Signs don't lie. Big hill. Oxung, baby. Dragon Falls, baby. Life is full of challenges. I've been informed upon meeting the gentleman right there that you cannot park overnight in this park. So we're gonna have to find a spot for our team to go. You know what this trip is about? It's about solving challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, there are two Crownland camping spots here. I have just spoke with a very knowledgeable couple. The first one is very small and it is already taken, they have told me. The second one is very large at the top of Ragged Falls, but they've put up like a, a dome tent, like a circus tent for the weekend because I forgot it's the last, it's the last week of August and this is the long weekend. Hey, somebody pulled up and parked right beside me and I felt weird continuing. So that's the situation. First one is small and it's taken. Second one is big by the falls, but I guess because of the long weekend, some guys are gonna throw like a party or something like that. Uh, girls, whatever. And that's fine, you're allowed to. It's no big deal. It's just that I'm in a little bit of a time crunch because it's gotta be, I don't know, 2.30, 3 o'clock. I got Jamie coming up here to meet me. And he's not going, and I, I don't disagree with him. He's not gonna wanna just like throw his tent on a road like I've been doing. He's gonna wanna have something nice. And you know what, man? That's my job. It's my job as his big brother from another mother, even though he's slightly older than me. Don't worry, Jamie, I got you. I'm gonna figure something out. I'm gonna have to use my phone. I'm gonna have to use Google. I'm gonna, okay, here's the plan. I'm gonna roll into Oxtown. You know what, I'm gonna to go to Oxtown um, Algonquin Outfitters right now. It's probably half an hour away. And I'll ask them what to do. There's gotta be campsites around here somewhere. I just want somewhere with a fire pit. That'd be nice. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, what have we got here? The Wolf Den Nature Retreat Hostel and Cabins. Reception across the road. I'm in. I'm in. Across the road where? No. This is pretty cool. Let's see. 
Yo. Shout out to Wolfsden. Remember how I was saying just to embrace Highway 60? Well, that's what I'm doing right now. I am embracing Highway 60, let me tell you. Last night of the trip, we're splurging. We've gotten this little, oh, let me just put my bike here. It's a little cabin called Bear East. Buddy, I will take it any day of the year. Here's the key to lock stuff up. Oh, it's just great. And the best part is they've got hot showers. So I'm gonna get cleaned up, guys. I'm gonna get cleaned up and then I'll be back because I just gotta bring my bike and I gotta unload and I need to just relax a little bit. And I also need to contact Jamie, let him know to meet me here. Okay, guys, I had a shower. Oh my God. It was unbelievable. And the water, the heat in my bones. I'm gonna have another one later on. So we're waiting for Jamie. It's confirmed, he's on his way. He's gonna love this place. I already love it. We're gonna do a little tour and I'm gonna make lunch. And I'm gonna, here I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna get. Mint condition box, cup of soup. This is what I need for lunch, something hot. And I'm gonna show you, we have our own personal cook area. You've seen this already, but let's go for a little tour of the place. So this is our little cook area that they give us. And we're gonna cook. Let's see how this works. I mean, it barely fits. So I just realized that when you stay here, you get your own personal kitchen set. So if you wanted to you know, do a pretty significant meal, you could. You also have the option of using the communal barbecue. I love it here, guys. And I think this is a good mix of the, the Highway 60 thing I was talking about. Just embracing the... Uh, Embracing what's there. There's people out there hanging out. <sighs> Love it. Oh, that's what I needed. I'm making another one. Little washing stations. <coughs> Three showers. This is the uh, world's largest propane tank. Little thing for kids to play on. This is the information board. If you want any information or you want to post a picture that you made. And just off the road, if you go in here, it looks like this is where they have their freezer and their fridge. Please give each other some space, it says. So you can. Buy some stuff here, items for sale. Fridge, and then a very cool telescope, it looks like. That's where we'll put our beer. But the most important part, I think, anyway, is right here. It's all kinds of little cabins. Oh, yes. This is where we will be spending some time tonight. So, Lots of wood, I guess stuff to start the fire with, lots of paper, a lot of this stuff, and all goes in there. So we will be having beers and sitting here for sure. What should I tell Jamie to get me for dinner? I know he's going to pick something up. I could, could go pizza, but I had pizza yesterday. We could do like a McDonald's or a burger or something like that. 
Um, you know, I, I envision him bringing KFC. He likes to, he loves KFC. Can I get him some chicken wings? I don't know. So my wife was asking when Jamie was getting here. Now, let's see what Jamie actually brings. Did he arrive? The man with the plan. How are you? No, no. What's going on, man? You're alive. Dude, I'm so happy. <laughs> No, put it, we'll bring it inside. Oh, Jamie brought the medicine. Ooh. Ooh. He's good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we had a uh, personal time by the fire, which means McDonald's and uh, Creamore Sleeman's 2.0. We're getting ready to go to bed, and we will see you in the morning. Don't ask what happened tonight. So we've gone from being six in the morning and having no no need to rush to 10 o'clock and now we're in a panic mode <laughs> <laughs> i gotta do my opening monologue good morning everybody i'm here in my bunkie with jamie mccharles we made some bad decisions last night decisions that we're not proud of but decisions that we're going to share with you so that you don't make the same ones you will note that there is not much footage from last night. It consisted of two bottles of red wine, six beers, and how many cheeseburgers from McDonald's? Half a dozen. And half a dozen cheese. Half a dozen. One small room thing. <laughs> half a dozen cheeseburgers and uh, 100 chicken McNuggets <laughs> that I ate in less than one minute. Um, so we're going to get up, pack up our stuff. And hit Highway 60. Today is going to be the most exciting day because the McCharles man is with me. He's going to pace me in because my legs are jello. Say hello once again to McCharles. That's tough. I'm not going anywhere, man. I'm done. I'll pick you up. We're going into plan two. Option two is that I ride by myself into town and then Jamie just comes and picks me up. That sounds like a good plan. <laughs> I'm like a little bit hungover. <laughs> Let's go. This is what I need. Sustenance. Dude, good call on the fucking cabin. Yeah. I would not want to be freezing my ass off. You know how bad? It would have been a suffer fest the one night. Yeah, I know. It would have sucked. I know. Dude, don't eat those yet. Those are for the ride. Huh? There's limited supply. Oh, after all mine. They are, but you gotta save it for the ride. We don't need it now. Buddy, we're riding fucking 30k. <laughs> we're riding 30k, right? 30, 30k. 37, 40 yeah. something. You gonna get the uh, coffees? Yeah. Okay, I'll start getting ready.
Heading out. Day number eight. I think it's day number eight. Military McCharles is taking expedition lead for today. He's gonna pace me in after the long haul alone. Like my gloves. <laughs> Jamie doesn't understand that in two hours we'll be sweating bullets. <laughs> I'm clearly a pro. Okay, first stop, we gotta go to Oxton Oxtung Algonquin Outfitters for the uh, ritual picture for proof. <laughs> Let's boogie. Let's go. The last one. The last one before we make our final push. They're on this side of the river, right? I don't know. I've never been. Maybe it's that thing across the street? No, no. I thought it said turn right and find You know what? I bet it's just after the river. Okay. This is where I was supposed to meet you. No, you were supposed to meet me. Oh, next one over? Yeah. That's the one. Ox time. Check. You want to go in or no? Nope. Okay. We got to find a picture for, or we got to find a place for the picture. It says Ox, ox time? Yeah. If there's a good one. If not, right here we'll do as well. We have come, we have conquered, and we are on our way. Expedition Leader McCharles taking first place. This looks like a great little road too. Ox Tongue Lake Road, guys. Yeah, there must be tons of shit out here. What is going on here? I love that little Heinz 57 thing, man. Okay, that's my that's my pace, just to let you know. Highway 9. I'm walking this. Got a big ass hill. So, we're making a left here. Yeah. And then we're making a right on where? Hey, check out the hill. This guy's engine brake. Yeah, you know what? Maybe it's marked as a port I beams. They're probably building something out on the lake, on the barge. Maybe. Okay, we're on uh, what's this called? North Portage Road. Yeah. This is actually the portage. We're lucky. Let's go to 23. I thought it was gonna be off-roading. So did I. And we're good, man. 23 up. Some side roads.
So we're just entering the map there, making a left on Edamame or whatever it's called. <laughs> It's what it's called now. It's what it's called now. <laughs> East something or other? East Browns. East Browns? Or Let's Edamame. Take that road up. 10K? Maybe even less. To, um, to that road? No, to the... 600 meters down the road. We're probably like less than two hours away from our destination here. Oh dude, we'll be there in an hour. Dude, less. Not maybe with your legs. East Browns Road! We love hills. We love them. This, fun. this might be a little bit, a little bit fun. Got the old logging road style for the next few kilometers. Edamame Lane, E Brown's Lane. I think it was a rat way. Jamie wants to go this way. Hydro cut. Yeah, the old hydro cut. We've had our fair share of that. We're not going there. You know what? Something down there is dead. I don't know. It looks like a carcass or something. Oh, wow. Okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get a... Let me get my phone out. You know what? Something dead is down there. Just so everyone can see... There's vultures, two big, I think they're called turkey vultures with the red head. There's something down there? A whole bunch of them are sitting, pecking at something. Holy! They all came flying out of here. What's that noise? Is it the Yeti? Well, it looks like they've got, oh, there is like a, like a bear trap, eh? Yeah. Well, someone's built a bridge over here. So someone comes down here. Imagine we found a human body. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody jumped around here. Yeah. Bunch of stuff over there. I know what they were eating. It's like a bag of dead chickens with heads. Oh, and the reek. What the fuck? It's like, it's literally chicken heads, man. Or rooster heads. Like someone's cut a bunch of heads off a rooster. Yeah, I'll take a picture for you. I don't know, man. I, I can't identify them. They're... I'm not opening this bag, that's for sure. Dude, no way. I'm not fucking opening that bag. Come down and open it then. You gonna come open it? So that's messed up. Jamie's gonna open the bag. Oh my god. It's fucking nasty. <laughs> There's the bug. <laughs> they just threw that off the road? I guess so. I think that whole bucket is full of them. Probably. I'm, you not, I'm not opening <laughs> Get a stick and do it. Get that stick that you brought. Fuck you. I'll, be, I'll hold the camera. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the smell. <laughs> Okay, well clearly, clearly that's where it came from. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I bet those other, those vultures ate the other ones. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, back to our, oh the smell. The smell is so bad. Back to our regular uh, programming now. Oh. Cool. 
getting a little steep here. Mick Charles, his calves will explode if he continues in this manner. He's actually gonna clean the hole uphill. Military, military Mick Charles. You're a monster. So we're right by Weedluck Lake. So many wonderful things to see. And then this right there. That's nice. And the number 69. Isn't that nice? Someone left in the middle of the highway? Someone had to actually do work. Like someone had to go get spray paint, drive out here, and do that. For, who knows, to make this video maybe. Maybe to make it in this video. Uh, gotta love what people do. Can't say I haven't done similar when I was a child or younger. You know, you do weird things. Your mind's not fully developed. We've made it. Oh, there's a cool little bridge too. Oh, it's a dam. Two kilometers into Huntsville. Looks like a little bit of a busy highway. Probably not too much to see. Ladies and gentlemen, Jamie and Steve have done it. Hope you can hear it because they don't sit down. <laughs> I cannot put that in. <laughs> so, Algonquin Outfitters is right at this intersection. We're going to ride in like champs. You ready? Talk to you, man. I get to go first. Oh. Gotta get the formal okay, picture, but we're done. Okay. Shout out to Military McCharles for pacing me in. Algonquin Outfitters, we're done. I'm gonna do a follow-up video to this, going over the gear, the route, and all that type of stuff, but we're gonna end it really quickly because we're gonna grab a beer as a celebration. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe, like, comment. Peace out, guys.